Since the beginning, Visual Studio Code has a built-in source control support, so that way you can do things like clone repositories and contribute back to them. But in an increasingly remote world, there may be times in which you want to quickly open up a repo without even having to clone it locally. Luckily, we have a new extension known as Remote Repositories that allows you to open and edit and commit back to source control repos without having to clone them on your local machine. Install the Remote Repositories extension. We have both insiders and stable versions, depending on if you want to use it in VS Code Insiders or VS Code Stable. Once you have the extension installed, you can go ahead and open a new repository through the green remote indicator in the lower left hand of VS Code. The remote indicator is also the home to the other remote extensions in VS Code, like remote WSL or remote containers. I can scroll down and open a remote repository. Here I can see I have the options to open a repo or a pull request, or even paste in the URL to a remote repo on GitHub. I can also see that I've opened up a couple of other repos previously using remote repositories. Now this command actually lets me search GitHub from VS Code. So I'm going to go ahead and search for a web app that I've been working on and would like to work on from VS Code without having to clone it. VS Code reloads, and it's going to look like I cloned this repo locally, but I didn't. There aren't any files copied on my local file system. They're all still living in GitHub. If I go into the lower left-hand corner, it reads GitHub, and it says that I'm working in a virtual workspace. And that's because Remote Repositories takes advantage of the idea of virtual file systems. Virtual file systems allow us to access files that aren't on our physical computer or our physical file system. And when we access a virtual file system, that's known as working in a virtual workspace. Now, it's also worth noting that some features aren't available for resources when we're working with virtual file systems. So if we click here, we can see that some of our extensions are going to be disabled or limited. But over time, more extensions are going to be able to adopt virtual file systems. So we may have greater functionality as time progresses. I'll go back over here to my repo, and I can go ahead and start opening up files and exploring them and even editing them. So for instance, I can see the readme for my app. I can open up folders, and I can see the uh, main app file here that I've been working on. And I could even go ahead and start editing and contributing back. So I could say, update readme. I'll save that. And that can go over to the source control viewlet. And let's give a commit message. I'll say, update readme remotely. And all I have to do here is click on commit. And that's all that was required. I was able to go ahead and update and commit to this repo without copying anything to my machine. Let's go ahead and check out the repo in the browser just to double check that our change took effect. And there it is. We can see that the change took effect. Cool. Remote repositories also allows us to create pull requests directly within Visual Studio Code. So let's try it out. So I'll update the readme again. But this time I'm going to do it for PR instead of just committing a change. See here, I'll say update for a PR as my message. And instead of selecting the commit button, I'm now going to click on the create a pull request button. I can choose a name for the pull request, so I'll leave it as default. And then I'm prompted to create a branch. So I'll say update readme branch. I'll hit enter. And after hitting enter, the extension says that it created a pull request for the repo, and I can go ahead and switch to that branch to continue working there. So I'll go ahead and switch there. And in the status bar, I can see that I switched to the new branch I created, the update readme branch, and I'm on the pull request. So I'm on the 15th pull request that has been created for this repo. So now I'm specifically working on this pull request, which is great. So I could go ahead and make any changes that would be reflected in the pull request. So let's say I wanted to make another change. I could say, um, add another line. Let's go ahead and commit it to this current branch and PR that we're working on. And what's great is that the remote repositories extension works really well with the GitHub pull requests and issues extension in Visual Studio Code. The GitHub pull request extension is a great way to have even further power over our pull requests. So for instance, we can view all the pull requests on our repo and we can add some different functionality to them. So it adds these viewlets over here. And if I click on this one, I can see the pull requests that I'm specifically working on that I created with the remote repositories extension. 
and I can go ahead and open it up. Here I can see the title I created, I can add some information like reviewers or assignees, and if I clicked over here, I could view the changes that I specifically made and even add some comments to the PR. I can also go ahead and just merge the pull request in directly. I'll do that now. Since I'm all done with the PR, I can even choose to delete the branch. Now that the remote branch has been deleted, I just want to go ahead and make sure that everything was merged in correctly. So I'll click on the link here. And it looks like, yeah, the PR was created and it was merged in. If I go over here, I can see the merge commit. Now we've seen that remote repositories gives us a lot of great options for working on repositories without having to clone them locally. But there may be times in which we want even further functionality that remote repositories may not support since we are in a virtual workspace. So remote repositories has a command so that we can continue our work elsewhere. I'll again click on this remote indicator in the lower left and I can say continue working on. I can choose where I'd like to continue my work. I can choose to either clone the repo locally, I can clone it in a container volume, which is offered through the remote containers extension, or I can even open my work in a GitHub code space. So Visual Studio Code wants to give you the option so that way you don't have to disrupt your workflow. If you need other functionality, you continue your work wherever you prefer and wherever works best for you. Thanks so much for joining us today to learn all about the remote repositories extension in Visual Studio Code. Install it today in VS Code Stable or VS Code Insiders, and let us know how you use it. And of course, happy coding!